guessing better. You're not hungry. When I was little, I got ill. I didn't want any tea. And I hurt all over. What's wrong? I don't feel very well. Oh. Mummy took my temperature. Oops, you're a bit hot, Teg, said Mummy. Let's get you to bed. I didn't feel well. Hello? When Daddy came home, he came to see me. Are you OK? You OK, Teg? Just got a bit of a temperature. No, I said. I don't feel well. Wooly cuddled in beside me. I fell asleep. When I woke up next morning, Mummy looked at me in a funny way. I know what's wrong with you. You've got chicken pox. I see what's wrong with you, Tig, said Mummy. You've got chicken pox. I look like a speckledy thing with little red spots. We'll have to get you better, said Mummy. In the day, Mummy read me lots of stories. My spots itch. Mummy put nice cool stuff all over the spots. I even had spots in my mouth. Mummy gave me lollies. Mummy made me lots of mashy meals and sloppy drinks. This one is Bernard. Bernard and <laughs> At night, Mummy gave me puppet gloves to wear so I didn't scratch. I like my puppet gloves. When Daddy came home, we played. We built things on the table. Every day my spots didn't itch. Quite so much. Oh, no red. Soon I was painting and drawing and doing things myself. Sometimes I felt a bit better. Sometimes I didn't. One day Mummy said, Tig, I think you're getting a bit better. Would you like Angel round to play? Tig, would you like Angel to come and play? Yes, please. And guess what? She's got chicken pox as well. Yeah. <laughs> Angel's got chicken pox too, said Mummy. I was excited. I got all my toys out for Angel to play with. I played jumping from cushion to cushion. Suddenly, I didn't feel well again. I didn't want to see Angel. The doorbell went. That'll be Angel. There's Angel. I don't want to see anybody because I don't feel very well. No, I said. I don't want to see Angel. Hey, Tig, getting better can take a long time. Sometimes you feel up, sometimes you feel down. Sometimes you feel wobbly. Sometimes you feel strange. Getting better is like doing everything for the first time all over again. Whee! Like walking in the street. Or going back to school. Or seeing Angel again. But every time you do something new again, You'll feel a little bit better. So go for it, Tig. Say hi to Angel. It'll make you feel like your old self again. Yes, I thought. I want to be my old self again. You've got spots. I want to see my friend. I want to get better. Angel and me played. When Mummy saw Willy with spots... <gasps> oh! It's only a toy spider. Oh. I like getting better. <laughs> ben, 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 ben. I love Willy. Funny tummy. When I was little, I loved my nursery school. Willy liked my nursery school too. I liked my nursery teacher, Miss Claire. I liked all my friends. We liked playing together. I liked Hashim. Hashim was funny. Hashim got excited a lot. Hashim shouted a lot. Hashim laughed a lot. One 
day, Hashim pushed me. I didn't like Hashim. I didn't like my nursery school. The next day on the way to nursery school, my tummy hurt. Daddy? Yeah? I have a sore tummy. Whereabouts? All right, come on, I think we should go home. Come on, then. Daddy took me home. The next day on the way to nursery school, my tummy hurt again. Daddy? Yeah? Shall we maybe go and try and see the doctor? Shall we go and see? Come on then. Poor Tig. Tig Jameson, doctor will see you now. Thank you. Daddy took me to see the doctor. Hello Tig, come on in and have a seat. I liked going to the doctor. Now, what can we do for you today? I've got a sore tummy. Oh dear. The doctor asked me about the pain in my tummy. The doctor said hand. to lie oh, down fantastic. on a big bed. Just go to lift your top up like this and then have a wee feel of your tummy. The doctor felt my tummy. So she listened to my inside. Let's have a wee listen and see what noises your tummy's making. Nothing to worry about, well, said the doctor. Tell me how you feel tomorrow. Okay. I like the doctor. She made my tummy better. Daddy said we can have a fun day together. Daddy took me to a park. Make sure Willie doesn't fly away. After the park, we went to a cafe. We were having fun. How's your sore tummy? Said Daddy. Gone, I said. Doctor made it better. Good, said Daddy. Maybe you can go back to nursery school tomorrow. My tummy didn't feel very well again. Hey, Tig, it's not nice when your tummy feels funny. Maybe your tummy feels funny because things are not quite right inside your tummy. But maybe your tummy feels funny because something is worrying you outside. Hey, Tig, something is worrying you outside, isn't it? Hashim, you're worrying about Hashim because he can be a bit rough sometimes. When you have a worry like that, you must tell someone. Tell Miss Claire, tell Daddy. Sharing worries can help other people sort them out for you. Sharing worries will help your tummy feel a whole lot better again. Go for it, Tig. Share your worries and tell Daddy. Yes, I thought. I'll tell Daddy about Hashim. Hashim. Who's he? I'm here to boy at my nursery. He pushed me. When I told Daddy about Hashim, my tummy didn't feel funny anymore. I told Claire about Hashim too. Yes, Tig? Hashim pushed me. Thank you very much for telling me, Tig. We'll speak about it later, OK? My tummy didn't hurt anymore. When I showed Willie to Hashim, it's only a toy spider. He ran away. I like my nursery school. I like Hashim. I love Willie. The hats. Hi. Hello, parcel for Tig Jamison. When I was little, I got a parcel from Grandad. Inside the parcel was a hat. A sailor's hat. I love my sailor's hat. Willie likes my sailor's hat too. I wore my sailor's hat a lot. One day, Grandad told Mummy that we were going on a big adventure. Ah, a message from Grandad. We're going on a big adventure down a magical river. Wear your sailor's hat. Wear your sailor's hat, said Grandad. That would be cuddly. Grandad's big adventure was on a boat. I wore my sailor's hat. Wait for me! Grandad nearly missed the boat. Grandad wore a sailor's hat too. You've got your hat on. Come aboard. The big boat rumbled and grumbled. Off we sailed on our big adventure. I think you'll find out. I'm the captain. Well, I'm the captain. Can you say aye aye, sir? I, I a man told us what 
everything was. And over on your right now, we have uh, the London Eye. Grandad made everything into a big adventure. We saw a wheel turning high in the sky. Spaceships spinning off to visit the clouds, said Grandad. We saw a tower of pointy glass. The Snow Queen's palace, said Grandad. We saw lots of boats. Fast boats, slow boats, and a battleship. Grandad spotted a fairy tale boat. Look, there's Peter Pan, sailing to Never Never Land, said Grandad. We went under lots of bridges. When we went under one bridge, it got very windy. Whoosh! My sailor hat blew off. Whoosh! Oh, My sailor hat was gone. It floated away. It almost had my hat. Had my hat, said Grandad. No. No, I wanted my hat. We'll go to the cafe and get a cup of tea. My sailor hat was gone forever. I was angry. I wanted my hat back. Well, your hat's gone, Tig. Well, uh, do you know what? I'll get you another one, will I? Do you want a glass of water? I missed my hat. I loved my hat. Hey, Tig, when you lose something you love, it can make you feel angry. When you lose something forever, it can make you feel sad too. But losing your hat was no one's fault. It was the wind. No one knows what the wind will do next. But hey, Tig, you are on a big adventure. Big adventures are like the wind. You never know what will happen next. Your hat blowing away was the most exciting part of your adventure. Your hat blowing away has made your adventure big. Remember, Tig, a hat is just a thing. You can always get another one. What matters most is that you and Grandad and Mummy are all having fun on your big adventure together. Go for it, Tig! Yes, I thought. My hat was just a thing. You look a bit happier now. Losing my hat was my adventure. The Tower Bridge was opened in 1894. Upstairs, the man was still telling us what everything was. The man didn't know what Willy was. Well, it's only a toy I didn't miss my sailor set anymore. I just liked having my big adventure with my granddad. And I love Willy. Thunder! When I was little, I liked big loud noises. Willy liked big loud noises too. Some big loud noises made me laugh. Some big loud noises made me jump. Some big loud noises made me shout at them. Quiet! Quiet! I like making big loud noises too. But one noise I didn't like was thunder. Mummy, Daddy! Thunder scares me. No one could stop thunder. Not even Daddy. You're quite safe. One day, Daddy took me and my friend Timmy yeah. to play in the park. It's looking a wee bit stormy. Thunderstorm? Maybe a thunderstorm. I didn't yeah, like thunder. Come on, said Daddy. On, we'll go ten pin bowling instead. I forgot about thunder. Put them here. I'd never seen okay. ten pin bowling before. Right. There were lots of big loud noises at ten pin bowling. I liked the noises. It was exciting. Did you know who's winning? The ten pin bowling was a game. When the ball got to the end of the lane. It hit the pin with a big, right, loud big clatter. Watch me. The more pins that fell over, the bigger and louder the clatter. If you knocked over all the pins, it was a strike. It was the biggest clatter ever. We all played together. 
but the ball was heavy. So Daddy got a special rolling machine just for me. We took turns to roll the ball and see how many pins we could knock over. Sometimes none. Sometimes one. Sometimes lots. And push it. We never knew how many pins were going to fall over. When Daddy got a strike, we cheered. Ten pins clattering over. Hooray! Ten pin bowling was so much fun. When I went home, I forgot the stormy weather. I played ten pin bowling before bed. That night, I woke up. There was a big, clattering bang. I thought I was at the ten pin bowling. I wasn't. It was thunder. I was scared. I hid under the bedclothes and cuddled Willy. Hey, Teague, no one likes thunder. Thunder can be scary. You never know when the bang will come next or how loud and clattery it will be. When you don't like something, think of something you do like. Tim Pin Bowling! Wait for the flash, roll the ball, and see how big the clatter will be. Flash! Roll the ball and... Clatter! I think we knocked over about five pins then. Flash! Roll the ball! And... Clatter! That was a strike! Ten pins! Hooray! So go for it, Tig! See how loud the next bang will be! Yes, I thought! Thunder is scary, but not quite so scary when you have fun with the bangs! You okay, Tig? Daddy came running into my bedroom. He thought it was funny that I was playing ten pin bowling with thunder. Oh, oh, oh. And then I I don't like thunder, but I like ten pin bowling and I love Willy. Subway. When I was little, I liked going on the subway train. Willy liked going on the subway train too. It was fun going down under the ground. It was scary and exciting. When the train rumbled and roared out of the tunnel, it squeaked and hissed and stopped. It was like magic when the door slid open and we got on. I was so happy rattling and shuggling through the tunnels on the subway train. I love the subway train. Wooly loved the subway train too. One day my friend Angel came to play. We played subway trains all day. We drew pictures of subway trains. We made tunnels for the subway trains. Wooly pretended to be a train. How about you build tunnels all around the room and then you can be the subway trains? Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. Mummy gave us lots of old sheets and blankets. We made tunnels all over the place. We hooted and went through our tunnels. Sometimes we bumped. Mummy liked our fun. Who wants to go on a real subway? Who wants to ride on a real subway? Before we left, we played sliding doors. Thank you. Come on. We played subway trains all the way to the station. OK, we have to be sensible now. We're going to go on a real subway, so no more playing. When we got to the station, we played sliding doors. No more playing, oh, so said Mummy. But me no and Angel playing. were having uh, fun. Then Mummy stopped us. She no stood between playing. us okay, we so we couldn't play. Come on, said Mummy. Going underground wasn't fun anymore. The subway train wasn't exciting. 
there was no magic. Mummy had spoiled our fun. Hey, Tig, it doesn't seem fair when someone spoils your fun. It's not nice when someone stops your game. But there are some places where it's wrong to play. There are some places where you need to take special care. The subway is no place to run around and play. Everywhere on the subway, things are moving. The escalator's going up and down. Trains arriving and leaving. Doors opening and closing. People coming and going. So Mummy isn't spoiling your fun. Mummy is taking special care of you and Angel. But hey, Tig, that doesn't mean you can't still have fun and enjoy the ride. Just sit back and relax. No need to play a game when you have all the fun of a real train. Go for it, Tig. Say sorry to Mummy and no more train games until you're home again. Yes, I thought. Mummy was right. A real subway is no place to play. Sorry, Mummy, I said. Oh, thank you, Tig. <laughs> Mummy let me and Angel sit together. We had fun on the real subway train. Just looking and shiggling along. When we got home, we played subway trains again. When Mummy saw Willy, she nearly <gasps> fell over. It's only a toy spider. I like subway trains. And I love Willy. Hogmanay. When I was little, we had summer, and my birthday, and snowballs, and Christmas. I liked Christmas the best. Oh. But what I really liked was that after Christmas, we went to stay with my granny. Willie came too. Oh. Mummy, Daddy and me slept in the sitting room. I slept on a blow-up bed. Hey. Mummy and Daddy slept on the sofa. It grew into a bed. It was exciting staying at Granny's after Christmas. One morning, Mummy said, Tig is a very special day today. Do you know what day it is? It's Hogmanay. What Hogmanay? Hogmanay is the very last day of the year. Hogmanay is the very last day of the year. So that means no more days in the universe. <laughs> so no more days. There will be lots more days because tomorrow will be New Year. It's like there's going to be more days. We've got the whole new year. Exciting things. Yeah, I didn't like it being the last day. I liked this year. When we went into the town, it was so exciting. It was like a big party. There was a fun fair in the streets with a big wheel and a carousel. Everything looked magic and music everywhere. Hogmanay was a special day. Hogmanay was fun. Everyone seemed so happy. No one seemed to mind it was the last day. When it got dark, there was a big procession with fire torches. A band played with bagpipes. Bagpipes. When we got home, Granny had made a steak pie. Steak pie, my favourite. It was so good. Is it still Hogmanay, Mummy? I just tell Hogmanay, Mummy. Yeah, it is, Tig. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> When it was bedtime, Mummy said, Tig, tonight you're going to sleep in Granny's bed. Isn't that exciting? Why am I sleeping in Granny's bed? Because Hogmanay goes long into the night and that is when you and Because me... Hogmanay is a very long day. Then Granny came in with a little tree. This is my special Hogmanay wish tree. Because this is my special Hogmanay wishing tree. Everybody has to make a wish. And once you've made your wish, you pop a fairy onto the tree. What do I wish, Granny? I said. What wish? Well, you could wish for something good to happen in the new year. 
I don't know, I said. I don't know, Granny. Oh, well, you think about it. And that's your wee fairy to pop on the tree. You have to think, said Granny. I was sad. I didn't want a new year. Wee! Hey, Tig, no need to be sad. Hogmanay might be the last day of one year, but tomorrow is the first day of a brand new year. But what about this year? This year will always be there, as happy memories of summer and snowballs and your birthday and Christmas. But tomorrow will be a new year, when you can look forward to summer and snowballs and your birthday and Christmas all over again. Yippee! That's why everyone is so excited and happy on Hogmanay. Everyone is looking forward to the new year. Yes. And what it will bring. So go for it, Tig. Don't be sad. Whoops. Make a wish for a happy and exciting new year. Yes, I thought. I love Hogmanay, but I'll make a wish for a happy new year where we can have summer snowballs and my birthday and Christmas all over again. Before I went to sleep, Auntie Shona came in. I just came to put my wish on the wishing tree. Where's Clive? Where's your boyfriend Clive? I said. He's not here, I'm afraid. I wish he was. Are you going to wish for that? Why don't you wish for him? I said. Yes. I think I might. Maybe I shall, said Auntie Shona. I've made my wish. And popped a fairy on the tree. Shona and Mummy kiss me night night. When you wake up, Tig, said Mummy, it will be New Year's Day. Good morning, it's going to be New Year's Day. I closed my eyes so my wish would come quickly. When I woke, it was dark. I heard music. I looked into Granny's sitting room. Mummy and Daddy were dancing. Shona was playing her fiddle. Oh, Tig. Oh, sorry, Tig. Is it New Year yet? Is it New Year? I said. No, it's still Hogmanay, said Mummy. Granny's having a wee party. Come and join me. <sighs> we'll go and get the food, Mum. My wish hadn't come true. Is Clive here? I said to Auntie Shona. Is boyfriend Clive here? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, maybe that's Clive now, Shona. When Shona went to the door, she didn't come back with boyfriend Clive. It's Tom. Oh. Shona came back with a man I didn't know. Tom comes from next door, Tig. He's got a wonderful singing voice. Shona wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Our wishes hadn't come true. Hey, Tig, some wishes can take a long time. Especially when you wake up in the night. But my wish hasn't come true. You've wished for a happy and exciting new year. But you have to wait for a new year to arrive first. New year can't happen just like that. We have to wait until it's exactly the right time. New year will arrive when all the clocks strike 12 o'clock midnight tonight. But hey, wee! Hogmanay makes the waiting fun. So go for it, Tig. Join in Granny's Hogmanay party. And it won't be long now before Hogmanay turns into New Year. Hooray! Yes, I thought. Hogmanay makes the waiting for New Year fun. On we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. Granny and me and Shona dance together. Then Mummy and Daddy came in with some party food. Haggis! The haggis. <laughs> the haggis looked funny. Suddenly Daddy said, Nearly New Year! It's nearly midnight. Ten! Nine! We all counted backwards. Two, one, three, Happy New Year!
everyone kissed and hugged. Outside fireworks shot up all over the place. Then the doorbell rang. It was Clive. Auntie Shona was so pleased. Granny was pleased too when Clive gave her a lump of coal. This will bring us luck, too. Mm -hmm. I showed Willie to Clive to say Happy New Year. <laughs> it's only a toy spider. <laughs> then Tam from next door sang. And never brought to mind Should old acquaintance be forgot And all Willie sang, too. Sang. Remember all the friends you have and all the things you've done. Remember all the friends you have and all the fun to come. Auntie Shona and Clive were happy. All our hope and wishes had come true. It was New Year. We'd have summer and snowballs and birthdays and Christmas. All over again, and I love Willie. The play. When I was little, I liked going to see plays. It was exciting. People dressed up and did funny things. I wanted to be in a play too. Once I was going to be in a play at nursery. I was going to dress up as a king. But then I had chicken pox, so I couldn't be in the play. Once there was a lady called Cinderella. One day, Mummy said they were choosing children to be in a play. The children's theatre are additioning for children to play the toy soldiers. Do I get to dress up? Yeah. But they have to choose the children first. Yippee! Yippee! I said, I'd like to be a toy soldier and dress up in a play. On the day of the choosing, I was very excited. We went to the children's theatre. There were lots of other children. There you are. Let's get in there. Right. Uh, Mr Tonka. Mr Tonka's there on the piano. Mr Tonka was on the piano. We had to march like toy soldiers. It was fun. I loved the marching. When can I dress up? I said to Mummy. We have to wait for the choosing tag. When we were waiting, the man talked to Mummy. And then we went away. Mummy and me went to a little cafe. Why can't I be a toy soldier, Mummy? Mummy, why will I be a toy soldier? I'm sorry, Tig. But they didn't choose you to be a toy soldier. I'm sorry, Tig. But they didn't choose you. The thing is, they need the toy soldiers to be a little bit taller. The toy soldiers need to be a bit taller than you. You wait there, I'll get us a good treat. I was sad. I wanted to be in a play. Hey, Tig. It's not nice when other people are chosen, and not you. That's not fair, Willie. Yes, it doesn't seem fair. You wanted to be in a play. You wanted to be a toy soldier, but not everyone can be chosen all at the same time. Sometimes you just have to wait and try again and have another go. You might not be a toy soldier this time, but hey, there are plenty more plays and dressing up. When one door closes, bang! Another door will open. Yippee! So go for it, Tig. Don't be sad. You just never know what's around the corner. Yes, I thought. I was sad I couldn't be a toy soldier, but you never know what's around the corner. Just then, someone came round the corner. Hi, Tam. How are you? Oh, all the better for seeing you too. Hello, Tig. Hi. It was a man Hello. called Tam. Oh, bit of a disaster. Oh, dear. Opening tomorrow, Elves and the Shoemaker at the Children's Theatre. Tam was doing a children's play, The Elves and the Shoemaker. One of the elves has chicken pox. But one of the elves had chicken pox. 
I wondered, would you like to be an elf? Do I need to dress up? Oh yes, as an elf. Okay. I was in a play. It's a bit of a rush though. Rehearsals this afternoon. I was so excited. In the afternoon, Tam showed me what to do on the stage. This is Louise now. She's the other um, elf. I know you know Louise. Louise. Of course you do. Right now, so what? She's one of the elves and you're the other elf. My friend Louise was another elf. And Tam was the shoemaker. The two elves run onto the stage. When the shoemaker grows old, said Tam, the elves make his shoes. Tam showed us how to make the shoes. Ready, ready. And snip, snip, snip. Cutting the leather. Stitch, stitch, stitch. Sewing together. Tip, tip, tap. He was so clever to make a fine pair of shoes. We practiced a lot. Tam gave me music for the play. I practiced the play at home. Stitch, stitch, stitch. Tip, tip, tap. So clever to make a fine pair of shoes. The next day was the day of the play. Louise and me did our dressing up. We had ears on our hats. We looked different. We looked like elves. It was nearly time for the play. Mummy took me to the stage. Mummy didn't quite know the way. When we got to the stage, it was the wrong stage. There was a funny man doing another play. Here we are, Ted. This is the wrong stage. No, Ted, that's Tam. That's not Tam. That is Tam. I was going to be late. I had to find Tam. Then I found Daddy. Suddenly, the funny man started to sing. Hey, there once was a maker, a maker of shoes, a shoemaker making his shoes. His play was like ours. I liked it. I knew all the words. Then Daddy said, I should be on the stage. What are you doing here? That's not Tom. Yes, it is. You're supposed to be up there on the stage. But where was Tam? Hey, Tig, people in plays can look different because they dress up. People in plays look different because they put makeup on. People in plays look different because sometimes they wear different hair. I look different, you look different, and Tam looks different. You look different because you are dressed up as a cheeky wee elf. Tam looks different because he's the shoemaker with his glasses, moustache and hair. Well, the clever shoemaker, the older he grew, the slower he's making his shoes. That's Tam on stage. Time for the elves to make the shoemaker his shoes. Go for it, Tig. Yes, I thought. That is Tam. I should be on stage with him. We waited for the shoemaker to peep. Then we could be elves. Dozy shoemaker, he woke from his snooze and looked at the work on his shoes. The leather was tapped and stitched and sewed, shaping fine shoes from heels to toes. A pair of shoes, the best to choose. But who had been making his shoes? Stitch, 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 sewing together. Tick, tick, tap, shaping the leather. Shoes, shoes, shoes. Who is so clever to make fine pairs of shoes? But who did the sewing and stitched? He worked and he slipped, but at night did not sleep. Keeping awake, he took a peep. Me and Louise were making the shoemaker his shoes. We were the elves. Stitch, 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 sewing together. Tip, tip, tap, shaping the leather. Zip, zip, zip. They were so clever, the elves were making shoes. A maker, a maker of shoes, a shoemaker making his shoes. He worked with the elves and he snipped and they sold, shaping new shoes from heels to toes, making fine shoes and hairs to choose. A shoemaker, elves and their shoes. Snip, 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 cutting the leather, stitch, 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 sewing.
together. Tip, tip, tap. tap. They were so clever to make fine pairs of shoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At the end of the play, everyone clapped. When everyone saw Willy, they all went, ah! It's only a toy spider. He's only my toy spider, I said. I like the elves and the shoemaker. I like being in a play. I love Willy. Open wide. When I was little, my mummy took me to see the dentist. Willy came too. I made sure my teeth were really clean. Do you like going to the dentist? Yeah. yeah. Mummy said it was fun and the dentist was going to count my teeth. At the dentist, a nice lady sat behind a big desk. Hello, Tig, said the lady. That's the stickers that we've got, Tig. The lady said I would get a badge for having my teeth counted. We had to wait for the dentist. Lots of people were sitting on chairs. We sat next to a giggly lady. Can you show me how you brush your teeth? I showed the giggly lady how I cleaned my teeth. Oh, that's good. Mrs Kraken, do you want to come through? Oh. A lady asked Mrs Giggly, Come this way, please. Bye-bye, Mrs Giggly. Bye. One, two, three. In the corner of the room was a play shop. Me and some children played play shop. Four, five. I did lots of counting. I it's your turn now. I like the dentist. Her name was Rita. I've got some juice here that you need to gargle around your mouth and you spit in the bowl. So that washes your tooth and that dries your tooth. Rita showed me lots and lots of things. Things I'd never seen before. There's a slurpy sucker. A water shooter. Sunglasses, a polisher. It's a special, special fast electric toothbrush. It's a special electric toothbrush. Is that good? But best of all was the chair. And then right up into the sky. The chair could go up and down and back and forward like a ride at the fun fair. Right, I'm going to count your teeth now. This is my tooth counter for counting your teeth. Open wide. Please. I shut my mouth. I didn't like the tooth counter. In a minute, she said. Rita chattered and clattered. Hey, Tig. There's nothing wrong with the tooth counter. It's just a magic wand to help Rita with her counting. You'll never know how many teeth you have until you open your mouth. Opening your mouth is as easy as yawning. <sighs> Opening your mouth is as easy as eating a plum. Opening your mouth is as easy as laughing. Ha 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 ha! Okay, I said. I'm just going to put my visor on. OK, Tig. Open wide for me and we can count these teeth. Open wide, said Rita. Open wide. <gasps> Rita counted my teeth with her magic Whee! wand. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You've got 20 teeth in there. <gasps> it's only a toy spider. Are you all done? She was very brave. The lady at the desk gave me my badge. And will they have a 
Of course you can. Oh. There you go. Oh, well done. I wanted a badge for Wooly too. I like the dentist. Wooly likes the dentist too. I love Wooly. Swing park. When I was little, my daddy took me to the swing park. Oh, we dropped Wooly. Wooly came too. On the way, daddy kicks a ball. Oh, oh you got it! I kicked the ball too. <laughs> at the playground, we ran around looking at all the things we could play on. The slide was very tall. Three, two, one, take it rolling! Yay! <laughs> I bounced on the springy seesaw. Daddy bounced on the springy seesaw too. Daddy and me jumped on the trampoline. Willie jumped too. I swung round and round in a basket. Lullaby, baby. Daddy swung in the basket too. <laughs> what shall I do? I swung in the ropes. Daddy showed me what to do. Daddy was so funny, he hung upside down. It's parts for children, you know. Oh, sorry. A man with a dog told Daddy that the playground was for children. Daddy said sorry. After the man with the dog, Daddy didn't do funny things. Then Daddy pointed. There's Angel, he said. Who's that over there on the seesaw? That's your friend. It was my friend Angel. Yeah, but then I saw Angel was playing with some other children. I didn't know them. I wanted Angel to play with me. Daddy said I should go and ask to join in. No, I said. I felt left out. Angel was playing with new friends and not me. Hey, Tig. You've always got me to play with. Watch me. Whee! And again. Whee! Hey, Tig, it would be fun to join in Angel's game. Are you worried she might say no? So... Why not ask Angel and her friends to join in your game? And your game is sliding Wooly down the slide. Okay! Whee! Yeah! I said we grabbed Wooly. Hello, I said to Angel. Come and see Wooly slide down the slide. Yeah, said Angel. We all slid Wooly down the slide. Whee! Then we all ran off together to pull the bell ropes. Bang, bang, ting, well... Daddy found Willie. Ah! It's only my toy spider, I said. I love playing with my new friends. I love Willie. Don't smile. Get your photo taken, you? When I was little, I went to nursery school every day. Willie came too. One day, a man was coming to take our pictures. You're going to look so pretty. Mummy wanted me to look pretty. Oh, you do have a pretty new dress, said Claire, my nursery teacher. Something very exciting's happening today, isn't it? Claire said, because the man was coming to take our pictures. So, I think we should put our aprons on to keep clean. 
we had to keep clean. When we went outside, we took our aprons off and put on our coats. I found a puddle. I had fun jumping in the puddle. When I came back inside, I wanted to paint. Ted, look at your socks. I'm going to have to get you some clean ones. Oh dear, said Claire. Your socks are all wet and muddy. I painted a hand painting. Claire liked my painting. Oh. Oh no, your dress. Oops, I forgot to put my apron on. My dress was covered in paint. Claire gave me some new clothes to wear. The man came to take our pictures. When the man finished clattering, he started taking photos. We took it in turns to have our picture. Say, you'll have to wait, said Claire. Mummy's coming with some clean clothes. I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to change my clothes. I wanted my picture now. I felt grumpy. <laughs> Mummy arrived. She had another dress. Claire fiddled with my hair. I felt grumpy. If she doesn't want to change, it doesn't matter. Never mind, said Mummy. If she's happy in those clothes. But I wasn't happy. I still felt grumpy. Who's next then? Next, said the man. I sat on the chair. Are you going to give me a great big smile? Smile, said the man. You sure? I don't I smile, smile, I said. OK, then. The man pressed the camera. Next, said the man. Are you next? I watched the other children having pictures. Whoa! I no one was grumpy. I was grumpy. Hey Tig, it's not nice feeling grumpy. But there are so many little things that can make you feel grumpy. Brushing hair, pinchy hair slides, changing clothes, waiting for things to happen. Everything not being quite how you want it to be. But what can make you feel even grumpier is a grumpy face. And a grumpy face makes everyone else feel grumpy too. But if you smile, all the grumps will go away. Give a smile and make your grumpies go away. Give a smile and you'll feel happy all the day. Give a smile and all your grumpies will turn into your happies. Give a smile and make your grumpies go away. Go for it, Tig. Give a big smile for everyone. Yes, I thought. I don't want to feel grumpy anymore. I want to smile. Make everyone feel happy again. So I sat on the chair and gave the biggest smile ever. When the man saw Wooly, he didn't smile. It's only a tight spider. Oh. I love smiling. Mummy loves my smiling. Oh, look, that's a lovely picture of you, Tig. Especially in the picture. And I love Willy. The wedding. When I was little, I had to go to a big house where my auntie Shona was getting married. Willy came too. Tig, why don't you come and have a look at your dress? There was a dress. It was very pretty. It was my dress. I was a flower girl. Oh, I have a tiara. Isn't it lovely? Oh, yes, Auntie it Shona was having her face painted. Mummy helped me put on my dress. Oh, Tig, what a pretty flower girl. Granny said I looked very pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. My Auntie Shona said I looked very, very pretty. Auntie Shona gave me a basket of flower petals. <gasps> Miss Lottie, my dancing teacher, was in charge of the wedding. Good luck. We followed Miss Lottie. There were lots of people in the big room. My friends Timmy and Louise 
and Mr. Tonka, and the Giggly Lady, and Granny, and Mummy, had all come to see me. Auntie Shona's boyfriend, Clive, pushed in next to Auntie Shona. Please be seated. Miss Lottie started talking. She talked and talked and talked. I'm happy to officiate her marriage to Clive. When I looked at Granny, she was crying. Poor Granny. I didn't want my Granny to cry. So I did my special dance to cheer Granny up. Granny liked my special dance. Granny stopped crying. <laughs> Mummy came along and stopped my dance. <laughs> Mummy said we had to get more petals. I didn't want to stop my dance. I was having fun. Mummy had spoiled my fun. And everyone else's fun too. I'm just going to get some more petals taken. Hey, Tig, it's not nice being stopped when you're having fun. But sometimes fun things have to stop so that other important things can be done. At Shona's wedding, the most important thing to be done is for Shona to be married to Clive. Miss Lottie can't marry Shona and Clive while you're doing your lovely dance. So Mummy is only stopping your fun so that Shona and Clive can be married. Hey and Tig, don't worry about Granny. She wasn't sad crying, she was happy crying. Ding dang dong dong ding dang dong dong. So go for it Tig, help to make Shona's day a happy, happy wedding day. Be a good flower girl and throw some petals. Whee! Yes, I thought. I am important. I'm the flower girl. But the most important of all is Shona. I'm going to make Shona's day the best day ever. I threw petals all over the floor. Shona was so happy. When Clive saw Willie, he got a fright. <laughs> we all had a party. There was lots of dancing. I like being a flower girl. I like to make everyone happy. Dobbin. When I was little, my auntie Shona worked at a riding school. There were horses at the riding school. Hi, Shona. I didn't like the horses. When I visited Dobbin. my auntie Shona, yeah. I stayed in the car. Hi, Tig. You're not coming to see the horses? No. Auntie Shona worked very hard at the stables, wheeling muck and stuff. Lovely. Teaching children to ride. Lovely girls. I liked my Auntie Shona. Willie liked my Auntie Shona too. One day we had some washing for Auntie Shona. I sat in the car. I didn't like horses. Hello, Tig. Then I saw a horse that I hadn't seen before. Who's that? Oh, that's Dobbin. The horse was very friendly. Bye, Shona. Bye. The next time we saw Shona, I said, Can I see Dobbin? Come on then, said Shona. Dobbin was gentle. Dobbin was friendly. Dobbin let me stroke him. I liked Dobbin. Dobbin was beautiful. I wasn't scared of horses anymore. I said hello to all the other horses. But I loved Dobbin the best. One day I saw children riding horses. Can I ride Dobbin? Dobbin's too old to ride, said Shona. We have a new horse arriving next week. He's just the right size for you. 
Next week, when I arrived, I wanted to see Dobbin. Where's Dobbin? Where's Dobbin, I said. Dobbin isn't here just now. Dobbin isn't here, said Auntie Shona. Auntie Shona showed me my new riding hat. Where is Dobbin? Dobbin's gone away, said Shona. When can I see Dobbin again? I said. You won't be seeing Dobbin again. Dobbin died. But where did Dobbin go? I said. He went to sleep. Dobbin just went to sleep, said Shona. He was very happy. Right. Time so for your riding so lesson, said Shona. I don't want to go riding. Auntie I'm Shona ready. sniffed I'll go and, and went Daddy. to fetch Daddy. I was sad. I was very sad. Hey, Tig. Nothing wrong with feeling sad. Nothing wrong with crying. Auntie Shona is sad and she's crying. But hey, Dobbin is happy now. Dobbin had had a great life at the stables. Everyone loved him. But Dobbin was very old and his legs hurt him. But now there's no more hurt and he's happy. He's galloping away in his dreams. You'll never forget Dobbin. Dobbin helped you to like horses. And today, Dobbin is helping you for your very first riding lesson. So go for it, Tig. Feel sad, but happy for Dobbin. Whee! But most of all, have fun on your first riding lesson. Dobbin would love that. Yes, I thought. Dobbin showed me how to like horses and not be scared. Dobbin would want me to have fun riding on my very first horse. I put on my riding hat. Ready, I said. The new horse was called Topper. I like Topper. When Shona saw Wooly, she said, Ah! It's only a toy spider. He's only my toy spider, I said. I like riding Topper. I love Dobbin. And I love Wooly. Wooly and Wooly love me. We've been together since we were wee.